Hello everyone, I am Erika of BeadingSchool.com and you are watching Coffee Time with Erika, my weekly beading broadcast. So let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me, you can watch this video from the Beading School Club and from the Beading School Facebook page too. And I see Marianska checking in already. Hi Marianska, welcome. And who else is with us? Let me know in a comment. I will take a sip of coffee in the meanwhile. Kathy is here. She's not drinking coffee, but eating pizza. I love pizza. Faye is here and Veronka and Maria. And Tanya is here. So good to see you. And Antoinette and Katya and Honey are here too. I have to say, ladies, that Tuesday is becoming my favorite day of the week. It, it is competing with Friday, of course, when we meet week by week for no one has to be alone. And it's also competing with Thursday because that's my creative day. That's when I am not discussing anything with my colleagues from beading school. I am plan, but uh, instead of that, I am making plans. What are we going to? What are we going to beat together? What are we going to do together at beading school? But Tuesday is becoming a strong competition. Recently, Adam said that he thinks that we drink too much coffee. We have like a double cappuccino in the morning, a double shot cappuccino in the morning and a double espresso in the afternoon. And he says that it's enough. But on Tuesday, since it's coffee time with Erica, then I can drink one more coffee. <laughs> so that's another reason to love Tuesdays, <laughs> but also for the nice company, of course. So. Thank you, Corinne, for coming. And Kata is here. Kata, I see your name now. Iris is here. And it is here. Sherry and Gunnel and Daniela and Joyce and Brit Marie is here. And Tanya has a question about the no one has to be the long session on Friday. Tanya, I also just noticed it. It is something that Facebook is doing. So what I've noticed that besides marking interested, you can also mark register. So that's what I have noticed. I marked myself registered. And let's see, I hope that Facebook is not changing what we were <laughs> used to already. And Gisela is here back from holiday. How was your holiday, Gisela? Where did you go? And today I would like to have a little chat with you about how did we start to bead. As we opened the doors for Beading School Academy recently, then I am thinking a lot about how did it all start how did I learn? How am I still learning how to become a better and better beader? And I thought that it would be fun to share these stories with each other. I'm super curious to, to hear and read, well, to read in this case, <laughs> that how did you start to learn? And we can also share some best practices and maybe even some obstacles, what could have been avoided on at the beginning of our, of our beading journeys. And Zuzi is checking in, being on a special beading school assignment. I don't know if you have seen her, seen her post in the club. Kura is here and Ginny is here and Gisela was in Germany. Hope you had a nice vacation. So today I would like to invite you to share our beading stories and hopefully with them to encourage beginner beaders to also start out on this wonderful journey. Uh, I will tell you also about how did I begin, why did I begin, and I would love to hear your stories too. 
and to give this discussion a bit of structure i will i prepared some questions that i am going to ask you and then i will answer them i will maybe even show you some pictures i have a photo i managed to find a photo of my very first set of jewels made with like real beads like Miyuki Delicas and crystals and everything. So if you want, I can show you those too. And while I am answering the question, the particular question, then you can type in your answer and then I am going to read some of those answers aloud during the broadcast. And hi Sue, and we have a Facebook user joining us. And Zuzi says her connection is cracking. Her train ride is entering the Czech Republic. Can you guess where is she going? So to start, and hi, Sarah, to start with our beading journeys. My first question is, how did you, why did you start to bead? And what made you want to bead? What was your motivation to start with this beautiful hobby? Uh, for me, it was stress release during university. So, uh, so I see, I see Kathy typing in an answer already. First, I am going to answer, and then I am going to read your answer. So, type in your answers in the meanwhile. So for me, it was stress release during university. I was double majoring. I had uh, lots of hard work to do while preparing for my graduation from uh, art history, actually, and uh, also Hungarian language and literature. So bidding was a much needed form of stress release. And it was a really hard thing to do to finish my studies. And uh, it was great to relax in the evening. And as I was progressing, that it made me feel good. And, and that helped me a lot to get, uh, get through that trying times, get, get through those trying times. And let's see how you started to be. And Kathy says, Tanya and I bought self-made earrings at flea markets. No day we were thinking that we could make our own. A bead store who stopped was selling his stuff at the flea market and we bought material for earrings. It one is in our own town. And that day we went back a couple of times to buy material because the seed uh, was planted. I totally know that feeling, Kathy. I remember that. At the beginning of my beading journey, I collected every bead that I could lay my hands upon in my surroundings. I bought every single size and color of the beads that were sold in the fabric store of the town where I used to live that time. And also from even like children's shop. And I, I bought fishing line and some do-it-yourself books, uh, but it was a very, very different kind of beading than what we do now. And Faye said, I found beading on a cruise. As soon as I made my first piece, I was hooked. And Jeannie says, friends invited me to come. Uh, come to a beading afternoon. We met weekly and it was fun to learn. So friends, <laughs> that's so nice, Ginny. Connie says, I was made redundant because of my health. Some, uh, some instead of working full time, so instead of working full time, I was at home in a black hole. A friend was bidding and that was the beginning. I'm glad it helped, Connie. And Susie said, I loved to, uh, to see a result of my work, to have a pile of beads and create something real I can touch wear, gift to someone. Great way to express and show who I am in the inside. That's so nicely written, Zuzi. Thank you so much. 
Uh, I mentioned it a couple of times uh, in the past already, but I can't uh, tell it enough times I have a feeling that as for a teacher, when I already had uh, had my beat shop in Slovakia, then my motivation to teach and to invite uh, invite bead uh, invite uh, uh, new people to the bidding courses and to encourage them to join was exactly what you are saying that writing that I saw uh, how proud they are of their work and how good they feel when they accomplish something so the difference between seeing them hesitating before signing up like oh i can't do this i don't believe i can do it and then the difference in the glowing eyes when they actually finish the piece that was my motivation i wanted them i want you to get there to be proud of you to feel good that how how nice things you can make with your two hands. So thanks, Susie. And Annie says, my oldest sister was beading. She stopped and I picked up her beads. I never stopped. That's a nice thing, Antoinette. And Shirley says, my daughter was little. My friend saw some beaded socks in a children's boutique but uh, that were very expensive. We figured out how to make them and used triangle shaped plastic beads. Then I visited a town that had a bead store and I took a class to learn flat peyote with round beads. It was loose, but I still have it to remind me how far I have come. That's beautiful, Shirley. Also that you that you still have that memory. And Daniela says, I started beading when we were confined due to COVID last year. We couldn't go anywhere. I was a little bored. So I started with a small kit I had bought months before, and I really enjoyed it. And that's so nice that even from a trying situation that this, but we are like hopefully slowly coming out of, even out of this, some beautiful things can start. And Cora says, I don't remember why I started. I was little and liked any sort of craft. I started with beaded fire animals. Then I stopped for a while, while uh, school got more and more busy. In university, same as you, I picked up beads again for stress relief. And Gisela says, my reason was that I have got a bracelet of seed beads and then I wanted to make it myself. And Iris says, I love necklaces. And Christmas, a college uh, said that she had re received a one evening course to make a necklace. I said, when you go, I will come with you. And I was hooked. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your stories, ladies. I can't read them out uh, all of them, but please come back here after the broadcast and read each and every one of the stories because they are so, so, so nice to read. And thank you so much for sharing. And let's progress to the second question. So how did you actually start learning? Was it from the internet, from a friend, from a course, from a book? How did your actual journey begin? For me, at first, together with those cheap, low quality beads uh, and that uh, cheap, fi uh, cheap uh, fishing thread, I also picked up some books in the bookstore, which were, I think, intended more at like children but even that like trying as Cora said the 3d animals the little mousies and crocodiles and so on trying the 3d animals or like stringing some some uh, easy designs even that gave me so much pleasure and such a good feeling that i have just felt that i have to continue and later, after those books, 
And in the meanwhile, please share, how did you start to learn? So after those first books, uh, after those first books, I uh, started to Google. I actually had a time when I wanted to give up bidding because you can imagine that what became of those cheap, low quality beads. So I was beading. Uh, I discovered some tutorials and patterns for very traditional beaded colors from inspired by African stitches, I think. And also I remember that some of them came from my uh, own culture, from the Hungarian beading traditions. And those were like big, wide colors, net, uh, netted, I think, with netting technique. And imagine them combined with the cheap seed beads from the fabric store and the fishing line that because of the weight of the beads, it became like, stretchy and then after one or two wearings the there were like visible pieces of thread between the beads so the end result was not really promising so i actually wanted to give up beading because i did I, I didn't know like what's not working is it me am i not good enough is it the beads is it the stitches what's happening so afterward, I started to Google and I found out on the internet that there is something else than <laughs> those first materials and those first books that I have discovered. And even if I did not have, I didn't really wear those jewels. I did not keep them at the moment. It's, it, it's actually a shame, but at the moment I threw them away but and gave away all the beads but even that gave me pleasure but that's how i yeah that's how i began so how did you begin to learn and zuzi has a question i will answer it later i actually have the first picture where i used turquoise and avocado together i will i will uh, make a note and I will post it after the video. So Zuzi says, I learned from a book I got in a bookstore. Later I learned there was beadwork magazine and workshops in your shop. <laughs> and Katya says, I visited an art market and saw the beautiful things. A few months later, I took a weekend class learning VOT. And Ginny says, it began with friends. They had some classes. We also went together to a peyote class at our local shop. Then the internet, beat fair, books, YouTube. We used so many sources. And Honey says, internet and YouTube. Bead embroidery from a tutorial by Mir Lady, Miranda Kronendal. And Faye was learning from YouTube. And Martina says, I started with tutorials from Bead and Button magazine, and I bought those big bags with cheap rockals made in China from the one pound store. That's what I had. That's what I had, Martina. <laughs> and Gisela says, first I have books, but I was too, it was too difficult for me to learn crochet necklace with books. So I got to a shop and the owner, Anya, teach me how to bead. Now she's one of my best friends. That's so beautiful. <laughs> and Gunel says, I went to bead meetings, but everything was so hard to do and I un uh, and understand. And as I see, it became easier and easier over time, Gunel, because you are making beautiful pieces now. You learn so much, all of you. And Brit Marie says, I asked some questions at a website and the lady asked me to visit a large bead event to meet up other beading ladies. Uh, this was in 2008 and I still meet some of the ladies after all these years. I tried a lot of workshops to learn more and more. <laughs> Thank you for, for your answers, ladies. It's so nice to read them all. 
So after I had that aha moment with my that there are some other beads and not just the low quality cheap ones but even even of those i i i had like heaps of those beads i uh big 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 piles of those beads and i was so determined to learn beading that i just wanted to share a little story that during university I uh, spent a term in uh, Romania as an exchange student during uh, through some kind of uh, uh, program inside uh, Europe. So I spent a term in Romania and I had a big, big, heavy luggage. This is me, by the way, sitting on my bed in my dormitory in Romania. I was like 20 years old. <laughs> And a big part of my luggage, it was filled up with beads. So I could not take a lot of things with me as I was traveling, I don't know how many kilometers, a lot of kilometers, maybe 1,500 and uh, with public transport. And I could not take a lot of things with me, but a big part of my luggage, it was, it was full of those cheap beads. And when I arrived in the dormitory, then I had to ask some help from my fellow students because the elevator was broken. And I got a room on the eighth, uh, eighth uh, floor. So they helped me to bring up my uh, bring up my luggage to the eighth floor, and then they were complaining how how heavy it is. <laughs> so half of it, I think, it was full of full of beads <laughs> that time already. <laughs> I also have a picture of my beads sitting in my in my cupboard that time. So yeah they were with me even during even during the ex the exchange program so after that time with the cheap bid i started to research and i found out on the internet that there are different kinds of beads available. I discovered Miyuki, I discovered crystal cabochons. I learned what a cabochon is. Hi Deb, uh, fire polish beads. That was the first time that I, I heard about fire polished beads and they completely changed how I was thinking about beads and bead work. And what really, helped me that time you were many of you were mentioning already friends and communities you belonged to and that helped you to learn beading so this is the first beading community i belonged to this is a bunch of hungarian beaders and uh, we went together to a kind of a retreat before retreats would have been cool before we would have ever heard about beading retreats but we went together to a little town to 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 be together to spend time time there together and spending this was the this was the little uh holiday home and Again, that's me beading with some friends. So that was that was a very important moment during my beading journey. And I'm really happy to see you mentioning uh, mentioning uh, friends and communities and sisters <laughs> that made you motivated to learn beading or helped you learn beading. And then this little building here this was the bead shop that i had in slovakia where i have met suzy and lutka and barbara and some of our beading friends here so 
the first one that I mentioned that was in Hungary, the bidding group, and we met maybe only once or twice in real life uh, as I was living in another country, but we kept in touch as we do here in the bidding school club daily, multiple times a day, I checked in what's happening, what's happening with the, with the others, what did they bid. So that's where I grew up kind of as a bidder. And then this was my second home that I co-created with other bidders in, in the uh, Slovakian capital. And Tanya says, indeed, already with fuchsia. Yes, that was our company color. And the little fuchsia color uh, flowers, those were the, like in the logo and everywhere. We even had a, uh, together with Adam, we had a little back, black car with the fuchsia flowers. So it was funny when someone was asking, like, we were coming with a car to pick up someone, for example, and they asked, like, how does your car look like? And we were like, the one with the flowers. <laughs> so at least it was easy to identify. And I'm curious, ladies, do you remember your first jewel that I have made that you have made? I have here a picture of my very first pieces and I would love to share them with you. <laughs> and uh, do you remember? What did you make at the beginning? What what kind of jewels did you start with? So this is, I think, my very first jewel beaded with, uh, with Japanese seed beads and with crystal suvon rhinestones, but bigger ones, six millimeter ones and Czech fire polished beads. So this is a design ma uh, made by Marie Giraud, a French beater who was between the first that uh, that used to who used to draw tutorials. So I treasured, I bought all her instructions and I treasured them all and beaded more, most of them. Yeah, as Kata says, we knew her as Biloba. And I think her, her brand was called Bilova and the lady was called Marie Giraud. I don't know if she's still, I think that she's not creating anymore, but I was beading all of her designs, I think. This was an older one. This was from an older French beader. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the name. And as you might notice, I used a lot of black. <laughs> that time so and let's see what did you beat first oh yeah Zuzi says uh, she remembers the car it was parking very close to Zuzi's building when where she used to work and Tanya remembers her first uh, juvo, blue earrings. She put it in the club already. Deb made earrings. Kata made biloba. Corinne posted her picture. Faye made a spiral necklace with size 8 and size 11 in green and silver. You remember it very specifically. Guna made earrings. Cora, when she moved, then she found her beaded animals. That's so cute. <laughs> Katties were purple and blue. And Maria also remembers her first two was Katia, uh, Katia also made earrings. Oh, Katia, I didn't know that she had a book. Oh, wow. <laughs> and Zuzi says, you actually gifted me your first bead embroidery piece when we packed your beads before moving from Prague to Amsterdam. I did not remember that. I actually have here some bead embroidery pictures from the very beginnings. Where are they? Just a moment. So 
So that's where it went. <laughs> Was it this one, Suze? <laughs> and by the way, I also I am wearing today. I chose a necklace that was and that would be my my uh, next question. That do you remember? Do, we were talking of uh, until now after our first jewels, but did you have a jewel that you still remember because it was like, oh my god, I can't believe that I did it. That you were. And Zuzi has this, yeah, the tulip shade bead embroidery. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> so did you have, do you have a jewel that you remember that what made me, made you like, uh, oh my God, I did it. That you felt like incredibly happy and proud that you learned, that you learned something complicated or you put together a color combination that you did not expect. For me, it was uh, it was this necklace that I am wearing now, and it comes from a book of Lisa Kahn, I think, and it consists of a pendant part and several beaded beads, all in black. You wouldn't believe, right? <laughs> and I was really this this was for me like a kind of a small exam that I set for myself. I bought the book and then I I spilled some coffee. I uh, I bought the book and then I was beading some uh, simpler designs from it and I kept this that this will be kind of my small exam that if I can do it or not. So then I was really happy then when I when I managed to beat it from from Lisa's instructions. And Shirley indeed says, so funny to see you using so much black when you started. Peyote was my first stitch I learned. So I am sure I made lots of things in peyote. <laughs> and Tanya says, the first crochet necklace I have made, it took hours and hours and hours and hours. <laughs> But the result was and is so beautiful. Seed beads and crystals. <laughs> Martinez was also, her proud jewel was a crocheted rope with size 15 seed beads. Oh my God, I have never done it, Martina. <gasps> Mania says her first bead embroidery. And Marianne, hi Marianne, made peyote ring with little flowers. And Ginny says, peyote spiral looked so difficult, but turned out to be so nice. And Joyce says, one of my first, I took a wire wrapped class, a class at Jones of a heart necklace that I made for one of my sisters. And Faye says, I made my second PW80 necklace with my own design. I couldn't believe it worked. And Alicia says, the book was from Carol Wilcox West. Yes, sorry. Sorry. Thank you, Alicia. So. And Gisela says, I have made a black and white crochet necklace. And wear it now. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. <laughs> so after mentioning our first jewels and after mentioning of like proud jewels, then I would like to ask, do you have, because uh, beating journeys just as learning anything else, they are also uh, not always straightforward and easy. And to help beaders who might be at the beginning of their beading journeys, do you maybe have some breast practice, some advice to share, maybe some obstacles that 
could be avoided if if you knew already what you know now so let's share our best practice best advice what we would tell now if a new beater was sitting now with us for me until i am waiting uh, for your uh, for your answers then for me for example one of my it's connected still the usage of the black color and uh, that's why i left also the picture on screen so for me my best advice is to take it step by step one new bead shape at a time not right away maybe ten, five new bead shapes start with simple ones and then start exploring Start exploring maybe super duos, gem duos, but one by one. Be patient with yourself. And, uh, and then also do the same with colors. If combining colors seems to be hard, then choose a color that you are comfortable with. And for me, that was black at the beginning. And then start combining one color with your comfort color. So what I did was that I started like black and red, or then black and green, black and blue. And at a point, I used like two other colors, like black, green, and blue black green and uh, red and so on and as i took those small steps during my exploration of colors then i actually don't know when did it happen i have another piece from those times and uh, then i noticed that oh wow i don't have black anymore and since I took it so step by step, so safe, I didn't even notice when I took the big step of leaving out black from my from my uh, creations. And another advice from me is to dare to ask, dare to fail and experiment, become part of a community and ask your questions when something comes to your mind. Mm, I uh, When I was creating some of some more complicated pieces also when i was working on some of my competition pieces then what really helped me that and i was hesitating at first but i reached out to some leading friends who were a lot more experienced as me and they helped me to get on a good track or to overcome a difficulty so i think that's very important to there to do and let's see oh Cora still answered the uh, previous one that what made her feel proud and she says I took a class with my friend Anya Schlotman I love Anya's creations and I I, I, I really like uh, liked spending time with Anya and that particular designs of hers, Ode, of Ode to La Ligue, just clicked with me perfectly. I almost finished the whole necklace in one weekend and my colors turned out magical. I actually decided to wear the necklace to my wedding. So we can also see the necklace in a small uh, version on you when we see your image from your wedding. And I, I, I remember that necklace uh, that you shared it and Anya shared it also from in many different versions from different beaders. And it's a beautiful one. And let's see the best practice, best advice for, for fellow beaders. Kathy says, buy the thread that is mentioned on the pattern because that's really important. I agree. Using Fireline or using another thread, it makes a huge difference. And Shirley says, everyone said how easy a row was when I was starting out, but I could not comprehend the thread pass. I actually learned curl before row, which many people said was not possible. I think 
keeping on mind that they also have like different difficulties and different learning passes and being patient with ourselves when something does not work out, when everyone says that it's easy, that's also super important. And one yes, that's master even count peyote first, then odd count, taking it step by step indeed. And Maria says, if something does not work, I leave it and rest and then go back. That's a super nice advice, Maria. That, uh, that's so important to remember. And Daniela says, I broke a few projects at the beginning because I didn't know about needle and thread sizes. And Ginny, I had trouble finding out what the items were that patterns spoke of. And I also bought beads that were not uniform. Learned the difference quickly. Kits were helpful in the beginning. And Martina says, best advice, buy good quality beads. They are more expensive, but in the end, your result will be so much nicer. That is a big truth that we all learned, I think. And Cora says, what helped me was to build a habit and just sit down for a little while every day to beat. Even when you don't feel inspired and don't have any good ideas, just make something simple. Be the kid, follow instructions until you're creating it a habit. Then the ideas will follow. And that's wonderful, Cora. Thank you for sharing. And Donna says, I would say for people just starting is to buy a stringing kit and weaving kit and the basic tools and see what you enjoy most. Then you know which direction you would like to go. If I had done that, uh, if I would done that, I would have saved me. Uh, if I had done that, it would have saved me so much money on things I will never use. Indeed, indeed. And thank you so much, ladies for sharing all this good advice while starting out on our journey with the Weeding School Academy. We often get questions from beaders that, am I good enough? Do I know enough already to join the Academy? So uh, parallel with the Academy, we are also trying to help those beaders who are just starting to, uh, re uh, to learn about the basic beading stitches. And this, that you took the time to type in your advice and your experience, this is and is going to be incredible, incredibly valuable for future fellow beaders. And I would like to share with you now two designs, two or two projects that are coming up uh, during the upcoming upcoming days, upcoming week. And one of them, it is the perfect example of what I think Maria said that if you feel that something is not working out, then give it a rest and return to it later. And yesterday when I was uh, I was designing for you something new for this week, no one has to beat alone. Well, actually, I tried to design something new for you for no one has to beat alone. Then I ended up with something that I really did not like and wasn't sure about. But I decided to either finish it or cut it apart a day later. So that would have been today morning. And today morning, this is what came out of it. So I chose the name Autumna, that is Latin for autumn. So this is what we are going to bead, uh, bead this upcoming Friday. And most of the beads, again, they come from the uh, come from the Beading School Academy box, the Magic Garden. I added only the gem duos on top of that, but the little metal flower, the crystal connector, the bicon beads, the chaton, the seed beads, 
and there are actually three millimeter fire polished beads hidden under the seed beads so they all come from the magic garden box you need to add only the gem duos to uh, to make the autumn pendant so this is one of the designs that i was working on very recently i just cut the cut the last thread maybe two or three hours ago but also there is something more exciting coming up during the upcoming weeks and for the next two weeks of coffee time with erica i have two special guests that are going to visit us and i will start with our special guest mentioning our special guest who will uh, join us in two weeks in two weeks from today so in two weeks from today uh, helena tangalin of manek manek beads one of the one of the best beaders like in the beading world she is joining us and among else we will talk with helena about how did she learn to bead how was her beading journey so uh, you can look forward to meet her uh, meet her uh, in two weeks and i will also post a question topic in the club before the coffee time is happening so even if you can't join it like katie says that she has uh, work stuff so you can post your picture your question there and uh, i will ask your questions uh, from helena when she is joining us in two weeks as faye says helena's pieces are incredible indeed i i admire her so much for the person she is for her kindness but also for her like luxurious jewels and amazing designing skills so i i am really looking forward to meeting her during coffee time with erica and that's going to happen in two weeks from today and one week from today to help those beaders who are just starting out on her, on their beading journey wanting to make sure also that they are prepared for the beading school academy for example or just want to make sure that the basics are all right then recently we have started a new line of boxes and we call them learn to bead boxes and they will always focus on a different basic stitch and next week we are diving into peyote bezels because i think that's a very nice thing to try when you are a new beater it's easy it requires a bit of thinking but uh, it is so rewarding and can be used in so many different ways so next week uh, one week from today we are meeting wendy Whitman a BD YouTuber here during coffee time with Erica. And we will talk about peyote bezels and we will talk about different possibilities to use them. And yeah, we, uh, and uh, I would uh, love to invite you also if you are a, per, a more more much more experienced beader then please come and share your wisdom share your advice and i i know that beginner beaders will very much appreciate your help and Shirley likes the filigree i think it's called the tulip it is in the beach shop. It's available in the beach shop. I will post the link afterwards shortly. So that's what's happening next week. But next time we will meet for the autumn pendant on Friday already. And I am really looking forward to meeting with you again. And I'm super happy seeing you creating so much already from the magic garden boxes the magic garden bracelet 
it's amazing to see some of you already have two versions beaded and thank you so much for your time today and i am looking forward to friday you can already find the material list for autumn on the no one has to be the one.com page so wishing you a nice creative rest of the day ladies see you soon bye bye